Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. While Creative Assembly decided not to make this fresh week, I've decided we should make it our own anyway. And what way to do that? Then talking about possible legendary characters for the future. As we already pretty much know it's Nakari, so why not look towards any legendary lords and possible legendary heroes for any of the Chaos factions relating to Sinesh? Just a quick heads up, there's not a lot of characters. Unfortunately, unlike Nurgle, Zinch, or even Korn, Sunesh did not get that much attention throughout the history of Warhammer Fantasy. Characters were introduced, but mostly through novels, and they had no... Well, no models, no rules, no nothing. But with all that being said, there are some pretty cool characters that many of you might be looking forward to, so let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So like I said earlier, there are not a lot of well-known Suneshi characters, even so very famous ones. However, we do have one right here. This is of course Azazel, Prince of Damnation, one of my all-time favourite characters throughout the Warhammer Fantasy universe. What makes this character so interesting is that he is very, very old. During his mortal time, he was actually of the Umbarogan tribe, meaning that he served alongside the warrior god Sigmar. In fact, they were somewhat friends way back in the day. Yet that friendship quickly turned sour when one of Azazel's brothers unfortunately had perished in a battle led by Sigmar. Sigmar himself. At that point, Azazel had lost the plot, just the best way to explain it, and he swore an oath of friendship as a guise to eventually get revenge on Sigmar, eventually trying to kill him with a poison blade, but killing his sister who was betrothed to Sigmar at that point. Azazel after that, who was known as Garion back in the day, had escaped further north into the tribes of Norska as, well, he really had no option. If he would have stayed around this area, he would have certainly gotten killed. He became a mighty champion of Sunesh and eventually being granted demonhood. In fact, it's actually known that the demon prince Azazel is so powerful that many say his beauty is second to none and that only Sunesh is more beautiful than he. Which, of course, is a bit of a weird statement considering that his model, well, yeah, looks like that. It's an old cast, they never really updated this cast for the future. But still, he has very, very interesting lore and has been fairly active. He moves around a lot, he can fly, he's a big damage dealer back in the day, he was at least. And he's one of the very few that can even make Bretonian knights start to question their own faith. The character is honestly very, very cool, and it needs a visual update if it ever gets implemented because we see that Nakari looks quite good. Azazel will need a lot of plastic surgery, but this is a character that many people have been wanting to see return in, say, for example, Age of Sigmar and even Warhammer 40,000, so Games Workshop might be up to redesigning this character. Honestly, when it comes to placement, I'd say that it's best suited for the Sunesh main faction, as we already have a legendary lord for the Warriors of Chaos, that's Sigvald, and, well, Azazel wouldn't really fit well too much as a Norskin leader, because I have another idea for a Norskin character. Next, we had the Mask of Sunesh, a demonette who was said to be such an enthralling dancer that even the Dark Prince of Pleasure himself could not ignore her abilities. Sunesh made the mask his own personal dancer, and the mask would dance to Sunesh's amusement for his wins, his victories, but also during Sunesh's losses in an effort to make the Dark Prince feel better. Unfortunately, one fateful day, the dance seemed to annoy Sunesh more than anything else, as if the mask itself was more trying to poke fun at Sunesh's loss. This, of course, threw the Dark Prince into a rage, who punished the demon in the only way he thought was appropriate, which was by making sure that the Mask could never stop dancing. Now the Mask of Sunesh travels across the realms of Chaos and even the mortal realms too, in this seductive but also destructive dance, and can never really stop. The character was a hero way back in the day of the tabletop, but could easily be elevated to Lord. It really depends as to how Creative Assembly and Games Workshop would see the character, as we've already had characters that couldn't lead armies, already starting to lead armies. Now, a big reason why we're going to likely see this character anyway is because, as you can see, there's two different models on screen. The one on the left was the original Warhammer Fantasy one. The one on the right is the updated Age of Sigmar one, which, of course, we've seen Nakari having a similar look. So the mask would obviously have the more updated one, which personally looks a lot better anyway. She is a demon, so the main Suneshi faction works out quite well. Again, Lord or Hero... 
I would love to see her as a legendary hero, as it kind of makes sense. Being recruitable by every single legendary lord that is a Suneshi. It doesn't matter if they are from the Sunesh faction, Wars of Chaos, or potentially even a Norska one. But there's not that many choices available when it comes to characters. So I honestly think that Creative Assembly would likely put her as a legendary lord choice, because, like I said, there's only like a handful. It's There's very, very little. Next we have D'Challa the Denied One, one of the characters in the Warhammer Fantasy universe that fell to chaos, but also has some pretty sad storyline, let's be honest about that. So, she was a high elf princess, she was born in Nagarif, and her father even fought beside a Nerion. Now, what makes her so special is that a demon prince of Sunesh was attracted to her for a long, long time, and rather than just outright taking her, he would continuously harass her family until her father eventually relented and gave his daughter to the demon. Yep, she broke her father's will and he willingly gave her to a Suneshi demon, especially when elves are so terrified of Sunesh and anything Suneshi, this is a big thing. Out of anger, she actually decided to agree to her position now in an effort to eventually get revenge, and even was given the choice of slaughtering her own family, which she happily did, and that's when the Dark Prince of Pleasure, Slanesh, actually decided to take notice of her. D'Challa now is heavily mutated, as you can tell, but she is not a demon prince, as there was an agreement that so long as her husband still remained alive, this is the Slaneshi demon which married her, and she did not return to her husband, she could not become a demon prince. She would never be elevated, hence the title of the Denied One. But she still happily serves Sunesh, traveling across the Chaos Realms, leading warband after warband against the other Chaos Gods. Should her husband ever have a proper death, then she will eventually elevate to that of Demon Princess. She knows that that would eventually be a matter of time, and has no interest in making things get elevated faster. Given her mutations, we can already see that she is more or less given the title of Demon Kin, which means that she would be immortal anyway. And the very interesting thing about this character is despite the fact that she was introduced in, I believe, 5th edition, I do remember that she was also mentioned in that of the end times, meaning that the latest canon, she just randomly appeared. If memory serves, in Warhammer Fantasy she had a faction name, which was known as the Tormentors, I believe. Really, everything's already there, the only thing that could be missing is where she could be implemented, and I'd say that she'd have to go under the Suneshi main faction. She'd be great for the Warriors of Chaos, but obviously Sigvald is still there, and I'm assuming because she is Demonkin, essentially, then she would be great for a Demon faction. Perhaps her faction could also have some mortals being implemented, like some reskinned Warriors of Chaos into more pink or purple. Yes, I know some people don't like the reskins, but it kind of fits with her faction, as she normally leads quite a lot of warbands from the Chaos Wastes. Obviously, yes, the elephant in the room, she'll also need a model update really, really badly, but then again, you'll notice that with a lot of the Suneshi guys. Next, we have Vandred the Majestic, a rather unknown character with... Well, yeah, no story. Essentially, he was one of the original lieutenants for Archeon, the one representing Sunesh, but he was then killed off by Stirka, so yeah, like, that's pretty much all his story. That being said, I did mention in a previous video that it would be interesting if all the lieutenants did appear as legendary heroes for Archeon, meaning that he would have access to five, and there's two choices for the Suneshi, Vandred, the character on screen right now, and Stirka, a character that we'll be speaking about later. So I do think that Vandred would be the best option for the Suneshi legendary hero for Archeon, mainly because Stirka is quite interesting, has a unique mount and so on, and is best served as a legendary lord for another idea I have. Of course, this is just a basic idea, but yeah, like this is a character which is, he looks cool, like you can tell from the model, it's pretty dated, but it would be okay as a legendary hero and just be done with it, wouldn't it? And lastly, Stirkar. This is the second character I was referencing, which later became a lieutenant for Archeon the Everchosen during the Storm of Chaos. Now, I'm going to have a controversial idea here, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like it, but hear me out. If this character ever gets implemented, he should be a Norskan legendary lord. So, his law is surrounding him that he is a tribal leader of one of the Norskan tribes and so on. He would be a great Norskan legendary lord if Norska gets a fabled rework and everything actually ends up playable. And it could work in a very different way. So, he's already got his unique mount, right? This is the famous Boop Snake, which thankfully is wearing a bra because... 
Yeah, demonetization is not fun. But as it goes here is that this is a unique mount just for him, though it's been stated in the law that more could exist. What if it was done in such a way where he would be implemented as a Norskin Legendary Lord, his faction would make use of demonets and warriors of chaos, just reskins and so on, because kind of makes sense. But then he could be bringing in a monstrous cavalry version of the boob snakes. And then it could work in such a way that as long as you use this DLC, it would then transfer to, say, for example, the main Sonesh faction or even the um, Sigvald's faction. So you would have a monstrous unit for free DLCs, but is purchasable through just one. Now, I don't imagine that we're going to be getting this in the Sonesh roster reveal, mainly because when we've seen the cultists, they've always been riding a horse. And there's loads of different stuff in terms of, say, for example, chariots. So I really, really don't think that we're going to get the boob snake, which is a bit of a shame because it's a nice mount. Yes, I know a lot of people know it because, well, yeah, but it could add for a monstrous cavalry unit. So say, for example, Chaos Warriors on the boob snake. By the way, that's pretty much how everyone referred it to in tournaments and so on. But this could provide a fast moving monstrous cav unit for the Suneshi faction because we know that the Suneshi faction is going to be mostly cav and chariots. So something else would be nice in the future. And it's technically a missing unit, albeit it's just a mount for one character. And well, let's just be honest, there's not a lot missing for the Chaos faction. So they're either going to have to start making it up or going back into older editions to just pretty much find whatever little bit of tidbits there exists. And. This is pretty much doing the same thing. The model itself was only a named character because of the Storm of Chaos. It was actually just the Lord of Sinesh on a demonic steed. It was one of many models designed by Juan Diaz, which is why a lot of you guys need to get bonked in the forums a lot. Because Juan Diaz was a very big fan of the feminine form and that was very obvious in his miniatures. But with all that being said, these are the characters. I might have missed one or two, I'm not too sure because... Well, there's really not that many, but let me know what you guys think about those ideas, and let's start a bit of a discussion. I know Sinesh is a bit of a weird topic because there's not a lot of characters, there's not a lot of units, there's not a lot of really anything missing, but given that they're kind of tapping into Age of Sigmar a bit, I mean, you know, Shalaxi Hellbane's model is being used as a um, exalted keeper of secrets because that makes perfect sense for some reason. You never know what happens in the future, but we're going to have to wait and see. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25 percent off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.